Next, we're going to add a strip of fabric running alongside this edge of the front patterns and around her neck, sewing the back patterns. Now we could tackle this by creating a rectangle and sewing it onto the fabric, but since everything is already simulated plus the overlapping part in the middle, it might be a bit more complicated incorporating another piece of fabric. So instead we'll do the same technique we used for the waistband and create a strip of fabric right from the material we already have using a slightly different approach. So we're going to take our edit pattern tool and select the line in the first pattern, right click and choose offset as internal line. And we're going to offset this line as you can see it's already appeared for 20 millimeters. So this is like a very easy approach so we don't need to create an internal line by ourselves and then curve it so it's identical to this curve. We can basically just offset the lines we already have and hit OK. We are going to do the same for the back pattern and of course offsetting the internal line for the same distance so it will be aligned. So select the line, right click and offset as internal line and let's input 20 and hit OK. And as you can see it's still not totally aligned. So we're just going to, with the help of our edit pattern tool, we're going to move these points from the internal lines a bit closer to here. So we're going to have a seamless continuation. And let's adjust this also. Alright, now we're ready to separate these pieces. And we're just going to select the internal lines we just created, right click and go cut and sew. So we want to separate them into pieces of their own, but also sew them back on. And I'm going to do the same for the front pieces, so right click and cut and sew. Alright, and if I simulate I see that everything is going properly. Later we will put on a different texture for this strip as for the rest of the shirt, so it's going to be a little more visible than it is right now. And next we're going to take a look at some settings, which I'm sure you've noticed in the property editor. So I'm going to take my transform pattern tool and I'm going to select the sleeves and the two front patterns. And the property, property editor opens up certain settings for me. Now the first is basically information about line lengths, which is not very important for us. Uh, the other interesting option that I would like to emphasize is the elasticity. Now usually elastic is enabled for lines, not for whole patterns, so this is very useful that you know that you can turn this on right here, but in our case we won't be needing this for now. But what is interesting for us is the simulation properties tab. And if we take a look at the particle distance, it's set to default by 20. And particle distance is basically like resolution in the empty world. The higher it is, less information is incorporated. And if I bump this higher to demonstrate, so let's go from 20 to 30 and simulate, you will see that indeed we lose a lot of detail, especially here in the sleeves area. Now, if I were to bump it even higher, it would lose so much information that I could almost see the polygons from which the mesh is made of. And if we go the other way around and go, so 20 is the default, if we go even lower to 10, hit enter and simulate, you can see that I have a lot more information that I have before. And also the wrinkles that start to create are also much smoother. Usually, right before exporting, I lower the settings to 8 or about 5 for certain areas to assure as much detail as possible, but of course that also depends on the project that you're working on. But right now we'll leave this to 10 and move on to the shrinkage weft and the shrinkage warp. With these values we can manipulate the shrinking percentage. Now lowering it means that the fabric will shrink and become tighter. So let's go from 100 to 90. And as you can see, it's already starting to shrink. Now if I also shrink the warp, there you can see it's very tight on her and we lost some of the wrinkles that we have. Now, and if I bump it higher, 
you can see that it's getting much looser on her and we're getting a lot of wrinkles so one setting is for the weft and the weft is the horizontal part and warp applies to the vertical part these two sewing terms describe the way the thread is drawn through. Now we're going to keep some of these settings, but we're not going to make them so exaggerated. So I would advise you to use these settings a bit more carefully. Don't bump it for 10 or more. I actually think that's still too much. So maybe something like that is ideal. The other tool that we will take a look at is a tool that resides above the 3D window and it is called tacking. And tacking basically means it fastens pieces of cloth together temporarily with long stitches. Now it can be used for fitting purposes in a traditional sense. So if I would like to see how this shirt would look like if it were more fitted on her, I could basically go to the back and tack this part together and without changing the pattern I am able to see how this shirt would look like if it were tighter on her so and if I don't need that I can simply go back with Control and Z but we can use tacking in a bit more creative way maybe for the sleeves before we just started to pull them up with our mouse but we can also help ourselves with the tacking tool to create the ruffles that we would like. And maybe even here. And let's select our Select and Move tool again and push these together. And this way we're able to secure the position of the wrinkles and the sleeves a bit more. So I would advise you to maybe play around with this shirt a little bit more generating some interesting effects and in the next clip we will be adding a folded string of fabric at the end of the sleeve and fastening it with a button.